How realistic is the handling model in the F1 game by EA? It's a question that I've wondered for quite a while and I'm sure we've all got our opinions on it, but I thought I'd team up with Brake, who used to be a performance engineer in F1, to really dig into the data and just give us a, a, an actual answer. How realistic is it really? All right, so I've recorded my lap for you and uh, I want you to work your magic on Ooh, that lap if you can. Um, so I've recorded the lap around Hungary. Um, I feel like Excellent. Hungary is probably one of the closer tracks to real life because I'm trying to remove the track variable because there's always going to be track differences. Yep. I'm trying to isolate the car variable. The only, the only thing I've noticed so far is that the lap's actually about two seconds quicker than the pole lap in real life. So clearly the game's a bit quick. Sure. Um, but I feel like maybe for you, that's a good thing. You could act like you're like a like a slower a slower team that's trying to analyze, dude, how, how are these guys two seconds a lap quicker than us? Where are they getting that lap time? Where do we need to find just, the time? The thing is your throttle pedal only goes up to 100%. You need to add that extra 10% on there <laughs> and you'll find some lap time. Easy. That's it. Yeah, Oldest easy. trick in the book. From the F1 data that we get from the track, the only things we get are car speed, throttle position. We don't get brake pressure. All we get is whether or not the brake is on or off. Uh, we have gear selection and engine speed. So a lot of that stuff, even though we don't have super, super detailed data, we can actually make some very good guesses. Has anybody done this yet? Probably to like a lesser extent, but I feel like uh, no one's ever done like an F1 performance engineer data analysis. Like I feel like we're going in on this. Oh my God, <laughs> this is world, world first. So it's been a couple of weeks and Blake has managed to do lots and lots of analysis for us on exactly how realistic the F1 22 game is. I'm really excited for this. I've got some of my own thoughts on perhaps ways it's realistic, ways it's unrealistic, but hey, who better to ask than an ex F1 engineer? Go on, Blake, take it away. How are we doing? Right. So we've got some data from the track. We've, we're looking at going back. We're looking at Budapest from 2022. On the top of this chart, we've got car speed from George Russell's pole lap is in pink and Alex's lap from F122 is in green. And this little graph down here shows us the time difference between those two charts. So first conclusion we draw is Alex is two seconds faster than George Russell. This kid is absolutely on fire. Get him a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Sadie, no. sign me up. George Russell yeah. who? Notice at the beginning of the lap, Russell is faster down to turn one and turn two. In terms of grip, in terms of lap time loss, I mean, this is the best thing I do. If you want to look at data and see where the important things are, look at the lap time difference. Now we look at this and we say, right, from here onwards, you're gaining a lot of time on the track. And this is this is a low speed corner here. He was actually quite fast as it turn 11, the right-hander, and I turn 10, the right-hander. The track was actually faster here. It doesn't gain that much time. And then the final sector, you're quite a bit faster everywhere. Your, your apexes are earlier. Uh, you're able to go on the throttle a little bit earlier. You know, is it high speed? Is it low speed? Let's take a step into a little bit more detail and try to break down some of that stuff. Is it traction? Is it power? Is it that? The first thing I will say is I think we've got a big difference in the DRS drag delta between the game and reality. In reality, on that W13, there was a lot bigger drag delta compared to what you ran in the game. Basically, in order to not make DRS ridiculously powerful, sure. they've, they've kind of nerfed Dirty Air, so you can follow a bit closer, so it's not frustrating to follow another car, but they also nerfed DRS to kind of balance the two. That makes sense straight Perfect. away, so I think we can definitely conclude that. The, the, the DRS stuff is that DRS probably is more powerful in real life in general, but as you say, it, it is only one comparison we're taking here, but that does make a lot of sense. Let's talk about traction. I think that's a really interesting point because now we've got the throttle trace here, which is in the middle of the screen. There's not really any any clear trends to me. For example, if you look at the second half of the, the final third of the lap, the final sector, you have a lot more grip in the sim. You're carrying a lot more speed. You're able to go on throttle sooner. You have more downforce because you're going faster. Maybe it's not perfect, but in terms of a general sense, it's not like you're 50 to 100 meters out on your full throttle distances. Now, this is going to be a really interesting talking point, and I suspect there'll be some clips that go about this on on, on platforms because what you'll find is a lot of league races and a lot of sort of sim races feel like that the F122 traction is way too uh, little. But you're saying from this data, it seems roughly right. Sample of one that looks like you're in the ballpark. At the end of the lap, it looks like the game has a lot more tire grip. Looking back at turn one, two on the track, you're going on, you, you take a different line in both of these corners than, than George does on track and getting a straighter exit out of this, from what I can tell without seeing the steering, right? I don't think we've got steering over from real life, which no. is a real shame. Because I feel like that would be interesting is, is comparing uh, traction or, or throttle application versus steering angle. I feel like that would tell us probably the answer we're looking for, but that's not yeah, available that's from it. real life. But that's 
that's that's an interesting thing. Is like when you have a car that has difficult traction, you will drive it differently. But in, in looking at this in terms of your track full throttle distances, they're not not they're not that much different. But I think you nail on the head there is the driving style is actually dictated by the grip that you have available from these tires. My biggest thought is that time trial mode and in the game, probably in general, the thermal evolution over a single push lap is smaller in the game. Looking at the time difference graph, that definitely seems to be the biggest conclusion to be. Is as you said, kind of up to halfway point of the lap, like we're, mm. we're within what, like four tenths or so up, up to that point. Yep. Tire temperature is there, but again, it's a thing that they've simplified a lot, I think, for the more casual sure. player, you know, so, so, so they don't push hard for a couple laps and go, oh, now I'm a, a second, two seconds lap slow in the race. What's going on sort of thing? I agree with you 100%. And that makes perfect sense to do for this game. You're saying the, the general feeling from the community is that traction is too difficult. And if you added a further layer of difficulty of traction's difficult and more sliding will overheat the tires more quickly, you would make it very difficult to put single laps together. And I wouldn't be surprised if in real life they are quite a bit harder to uh, put together. But it's it's a it's a it's not a sim it's a it's a, a, a cool game you know? <laughs> cool game <laughs> so the next thing we've got that i notice is we've got a little bit of data available about and we can infer what the gear ratios are of the actual cars on track and an interesting note is teams can only use one set of gear ratios for the entire season but teams have different gear ratios and I looked at this recently and so I thought why don't we look at what the game has used in terms of gear ratios so here um, again we've got the game and track and this is basically first gear second gear third gear and so on here's the top gear the vertical axis is engine speed and the horizontal axis is car speed can't really tell too much about third because I only use full throttle points because if it's not full throttle it's possibly impacted by wheel spin and stuff like that. So I said, only show me full throttle points. So I see, okay, so that's why the first and second gear completely missing there, that makes sense. Exactly, so fourth gear, overall that is pretty close in terms of gear ratio, I'm gonna ignore that. Each ratio gets further and further away. And in, it looks like the game's ratios are actually a bit shorter than the track. For example, eighth gear. In the game, if you extrapolate this to the same engine speed, you'd going be going about, for 310, you'd have about 10,000 RPM, right? But in reality, at 310, you're going 11,400 RPM. So the gear ratios are quite a bit different between the game. Considering the torque curves of these engines are quite flat, I don't really feel like those are that important. And the, they kind of just looked at it like, here's the top speeds we're gonna see in the game with the toe effect and the DRS effect that we've got. To answer the question strictly, the gear ratios in this instance are not particularly close to reality. Would you guesstimate that probably the gear ratios, first, second, third are similar-ish to real life? I think first, second, and third gear are probably pretty close to reality. And what we're looking at is probably one of the more difficult things about a Formula One game or any t any racing game is the tire. Formula One teams even don't have these perfect. If they had these perfect, you wouldn't see all these strategy mess ups and all this other stuff. It goes to show you that even uh, the best of the best of the best don't get these things right all the time. Tires are very difficult. The fact that the game is drivable to this extent and it's slightly different that's a, that's a lot of work and a lot of expertise and a lot of experimenting that needs to go in to make if you were to make it perfect not bad in my opinion and the last thing that we haven't really talked about is the compromise of engine power and drag when you're full throttle in a straight line excluding the drs zones you're not gaining or losing time on the straights and to me that says the balance of power and drag is about correct for this game this would be actually very interesting now that we've taken a medium to high down force circuit which is budapest i'd love to see one of the high this maybe the temple of speed Monza. Monza. we could make more conclusions about the compromise of power and drag but i think power and drag as a whole the game has got that right. Just, just look at that graph as well. So the real life lap goes slightly ahead before turn one because of DRS. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of stays roughly level for that. I feel like if we just corrected DRS, we actually might see by turn five, excluding tire temps, would probably make it pretty damn close actually across those first five corners <laughs> of, of, of Budapest. So yeah. if you were to make your dream sim based on just this one data alone. I know it's only one data point and you'd probably sure. be reluctant to draw conclusions. If you were to make the F1 222 game more realistic, make it as realistic as you possibly can based on what you've learned from here, what would you change? Exactly as you said, scale the DRS delta uh, up a little bit, get a little bit more top speed of that DRS, then you guys would be neck and neck by turn four. And then we need to start losing more grip as a function of the lap and how much energy you're putting in. So about a second and a half from turn four onwards, you probably need to drop 
five six percent tire grip by the end of the lap okay and, and that's all drs delta tire yeah. temp and what, what i would do if you wanted to take a stab at this you could literally go away and say right we've got the first half of the lap right how much tire grip do we need to take out to get to the second half of the lap right what we could do which i feel like i'm gonna do is a little challenge we're gonna set myself you're gonna do you're gonna do it i'm gonna do it because it sounds like uh, we're close and we thought, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to change, you know, total tire grip. We're going to have to change downforce levels and go like really into power levels, drag, everything. No. It sounds like actually, if I just make the DRS a bit more powerful and if I can make the tires m much more sensitive to tire temperature changes, which I believe I can. You're going to make your life pretty difficult, but <laughs> in, in the pursuit of correlation and improving to reality, I believe in you. <laughs> all right there's a challenge for me and that'll be the next video i'm gonna try and see if i can get the lap pretty close you said you know what dude as soon as you get that done send me your data and we'll go through another session and we'll talk about it and see what we've done i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing what you can do with this because uh if, if they want to call us to uh, help improve the model correlation <laughs> for uh, f123 we are available uh, yeah, we are, for, yeah, a, for, a for a fee Oh, a hefty fee, a big, big old fee. We've spent, I, we've spent years working on this, haven't we? I, it's been I mean, oh, to our be, life's work. To be fair, between both of us, there's, you know, 11 years of Formula One experience. I mean, all 11 of those years are mine, but oh, at the same time. Yeah, I was going to say, not but, many but, of it's mine, but. but, but like, how many years of sim driving experience do you have on this? You're, you, you've you been in this game for a while, man. You know, you know, the, you know, the brand in and out. Um, I, I just need, there's this room right there for a sim rig. I'll take the door off. I just need that as payment. And we'll be good. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks so much for that uh, break. That's, that's been awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been really interesting actually just to see it from, I, I guess, an unprejudiced point of view, whereby you, you don't play the game. You haven't got any previous thoughts on, hey, this bit is, I know this bit's wrong, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hone on this straight away. I think a lot of league races would go, hey, hey, the traction's the traction's way too little, and they'd, they'd really they'd almost try and prove their own point based on data. Whereas you didn't come from that point of view; you just looked at the data. I think that's why it was really really valuable, and definitely some some really interesting conclusions. So uh, yeah, thanks so much, man. I, I really appreciate the time. And uh, sounds like I've got a bit of a challenge for myself now to, to to go away and see if I can see if I can impress you with the, with that time difference graph. <laughs> Let's see. I can't wait to see it, man. Best of luck, and I'm looking forward to part two of this series. So there we go then. In answer to the question, how realistic is F122? Turns out the answer is actually quite realistic. Um, only really the DRS and then the tire temperatures were the only real big factors affecting things. Everything else actually quite accurate. If you enjoyed this video, do go and check out Brake's channel. He's going to do a video uh, on, on how he did the analysis in a bit more detail. So if you got this far, you'll almost certainly enjoy his content. Don't forget to drop us up here as well, because I'm going to be doing that video where I try and see if I can make the F1 game more realistic than EA can. Anyway, guys, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.